Okay, so today we're going to talk about composing intros and what goes into making an interesting introduction to your compositions. Now, I'm going to use an example from How to Train Your Dragon, the opening cue, this is Burke. I think that this is a great example of how to create an interesting intro that creates a lot of suspense, but yet when the real tunes start, the real themes start, there's something very musical and moving about them that feels like a distinct departure. It feels as if we realized, oh, the, that intro was very sturdy and steady and not moving anywhere, and all of a sudden this music is really coming to life. And what I want to talk about today is something that is going to you're going to see used all the time in compositions, which is the use of a pedal tone or a pedal note. And these are great for introductions and composing intros. If you are not familiar with the idea of a pedal tone, it's really simple. The idea is that you pick a note, you pick one note, and you just hold it down. A lot of the time, certainly the place to start is to just pick your root note, whatever key you're in, just pick that note and then hold it down. So what we're gonna look at now is the intro from How to Train Your Dragon, the opening cue, uh, setting up the stage with the epic monstrous brass section. There's a little bit toned down for this intro, but let's take a listen to what this sounds like and look at it in sheet music form. Okay, so the first thing to note here is the massive size of this brass section. This is much bigger than usual, and it's something just to take note of. Um, it doesn't necessarily affect the theory of how you think about composing your intros, but what I wanna do now is I just wanna solo the bass trombones and the tuba. Listen to how remarkably boring this is. And it goes on like that for the rest of the intro. This is a pedal tone. This is a pedal note. So what's going on here is that we've got some implied harmonic decisions with the melody on top, but what the bass trombones and the tuba are doing down in the bass note is they're just sticking on the root note. And what that does is it creates this sense of tension um, that you almost don't realize because the continuous note, the fact that it's playing so continuously, it almost fades into the background. And so what happens is after this period of time, we've been listening to this pedal tone at the bottom with our melody on top, what's subconsciously going on is our brain is very focused on the moving parts. We're listening to the horns and the trombones because they're moving. But of course in the background, these, this bass line is happening. It is still a bass line even though it's not moving. And what happens then is when the main theme comes in, once we actually start getting some movement in the bass line, all of a sudden that really simple, what might be really simple movement in your main tune, in your main theme is gonna feel so alive and so magical because of the contrast to how steady this uh, pedal note is and this, this pedal tone. So let me just solo the horns and the trombones and take a listen to what they sound like on their own. It almost sounds like the exact same, like you almost wouldn't even know that the bass trombones and the tubas are missing because this is the theme, this is the tune. Get some chords here. But again, once, once I add in the bass trombones and the tuba, just listen to the weight that this gives. They're clearly there, but because of the fact that they're not moving, we get this real stability, which creates a sense of tension without having to use a ton of dissonance. So there might be some dissonance here uh, in, in a sort of very traditional sense of we might have, uh, you know, non-thirds, non-sixths, we might have seconds or sevenths or, or, or something like that. But not dissonance in the sense that we're implying any sort of like weird chord, like a diminished chord or some sort of like minor chord with a major six or major seven or something. There's not dissonance in that way. We're using a lot of very basic major harmony. We're just sticking with this pedal tone. So anyways, I've spoken enough. What I wanna do now is hop on over into Ableton to look at the piano roll to really dissect what's going on. Okay, so here we are in the piano roll. And what you can see is that this brown notes down at the bottom represent the tuba. These red notes represent the bass trombone. 
The green notes are going to represent the trombones. And then if I go into focus mode here, these blue notes represent the horns. If I, let me turn my scale back on. So we're in G major, right? So as I said, we've got the pedal tones down here on G. Now what's going on that's creating this really interesting intro that's building a sense of tension? Well, not much. I mean, we start on a G major chord, right? We start on the one. But what John Powell is using here is implied suspensions. So the use of this fourth down to the second, we've got this implied sus4 chord to a sus2, resolving, going back up to a sus4, resolving back down into the major one. We are, for this first section here, not even leaving the one chord. By just using suspensions and having a pedal tone in the bass, we've got this really interesting suspenseful feeling, but it's also not super dark. I don't know if you've ever struggled with this feeling of trying to create something that's interesting and ominous, but a lot of the time you end up by not just using your traditional major chords, you create something which sounds like way too dissonant. Like this is a kid's movie. It's not supposed to sound super, super dark. So how does John Powell go about this? Well, he just has a really simple theme going on here, you know, using half notes and quarter notes for the most part. And he's just implying that we're hanging out on the one chord using suspensions and some syncopation to change the rhythm ever so slightly. Then we move over here into our four chord, up into our two chord, um, then there's this use of this brief. There is a use of a tritone here to create some interesting dissonance, but it does resolve very nicely back down into the major five chord. And then we sort of slowly move back down into our final. Uh, as the brass transitions out, we've just got the root note, and it's uh, the root note in fifths. We don't even have a G major chord. We just have G's and D's. Um, which is uh, which is a great way of sort of leaving things open and ambiguous as the first main theme comes in. So I hope you can see that this is not super complicated. It really is just making use of the pedal tone. So it's really not that complicated. It's just using a little bit of relatively basic counterpoint. Um, and there's, a, a, you know, at most, there's three lines, there's three moving parts here, but we're just sort of implying some really basic chords on top of that pedal note. And we're also not worried about dissonances between the chords that we're using because we're just using basic chords in the key. Because of the pedal note in the bass and its consistency and the fact that it's faded into the background, our ear really isn't gonna pick up on dissonance. Now, if we were to play a note here, if we were to modulate and go to a different chord or to a different key and keep that pedal tone, then it's gonna start to really stand out. But I think sticking in G major, Major. Um, and again, starting with the use of just the suspensions around the G major chord sets John Powell up for this really awesome intro. And if you haven't listened to the cue, I would definitely recommend going and just listening to the cue. This is Burke to the first How to Train Your Dragon film. Um, I'm not going to play it because the video will get taken down. But listen to this intro and then listen how it transitions into that first theme and how alive that first theme sounds. And I think so much of it comes down to this contrast. So what I'm going to do now is now that we've looked at that um, and we've seen how relatively simple it is, I'm going to build something similar from scratch. And what I'm going to do as a practice exercise here is I'm not going to be worried about creating something that's so similar that I would feel bad about like releasing it as my own thing. You know, this the point of this is a learning exercise. So I'm going to take a lot of the same things. I'm going to borrow time signatures. I'm going to borrow tempo. I'm going to borrow orchestration techniques. I'm going to borrow the instruments. All I'm gonna do is work, as, work on practicing the compositional techniques that John used just to create something which is enough my own thing that I'm understanding the concepts here. So I wanna be really clear that I'm not presenting this as if it's some incredible original composition of mine. The whole point is to teach you that it's okay when you're practicing, so long as you're not going on to release this yourself per se, to create things which are really, really similar if they have a bonus uh, or, or a benefit to you in your learning. So let's hop into the piano roll and look what I came up with. So what I did was I just decided to move to a new key. I moved to E major. So what we can do is turn on our scale here, go to E major, and then go to our scale. And you can see I started with just the same pedal note. I was like, okay, I wanna create my own. I'm just gonna have a pedal note. I'm gonna stick with the time signature, the tempo, everything. And the next thing I did was I said, okay, I'm gonna change it up ever so slightly where I'm gonna have my bass trombones come in um, a bar earlier than John Powell's did to create a little bit, you know, these are not very percussive instruments, the brass. So this isn't gonna be, this isn't gonna necessarily really stand out as sort of coming in on a different beat, but it's just doing something a little bit different. So I've still got a pedal tone here cause we're just hanging out on E, but instead of, 
something which looked like maybe like this with John Powell's, I've just moved it back a bar just as to do something a little bit different. So the pedal tones are gonna sound incredibly boring and simple on their own. I'm just using a piano for this sketch. Now, the next thing I went and did was just drew in a melody. Um, and I tried to use some suspensions in the beginning and then draw in some chords later on. I'm not quite as happy as it, as I, you know, I don't like it as much as I like John, uh, I was about to call him John Williams. I, I don't like it as much as I like John Powell's. I don't like it the same. Part of that is going to be, and this is another important thing to recognize, is that when you're using something as a training tool and it's something, a piece of music you really like, what your ear is going to be telling you to do is just make that thing. That's the thing I like. Why don't I just make that? So making something which is different, no matter how good or you know musically correct it is, just recognize that it's okay, that it might not sound as good. Now, also, the harmony here I gets a little weird in a way that John Powell's doesn't, and the the transition into the final cadence sounds a little bit too classical music-y for my ears and my taste. But the point of this is a learning exercise. I'm just trying to look at what John Powell did, create something which is similar enough that when in the process of sort of essentially recreating it with just my own twist on things, I'm really learning and taking in what it is that John Powell did. So let me just turn on the melody, which was the next thing I created, which took me all of, you know, two or three minutes, maybe, maybe five minutes. So now with the melody, let's listen to what this sounds like with the pedal tones down in the bass. So a little weird. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I was going at the end of there. It kind of sounds like a run-on sentence. And I think if I was really working on this as my own project, I would want to tweak some things because I'm not particularly happy with that. But once again, this is a learning exercise. No need to make it more complicated than it needs to be. So the next thing I did was just added in um, some counter lines. And I'm really trying to you know, stick on the root note, make a lot of use of this root note in the beginning so that the suspensions really stand out. And then just you know, use some of the chords within E major to create a little bit of interest as we move into the full piece and just create a little bit of counterpoint and give it a little bit of harmonic interest whilst keeping that pedal tone down in the bass so that this doesn't really have the satisfying movement of actually like a full-blown chord change. So let's just listen to what this all sounds like now. So that's what I came up with in not too much time. Like I said, don't like it nearly as much as John Powell's, but it'll do for the purpose of the learning exercise. And now the next thing I went and did that I'm not going to show now because it would take a little bit too much time and it's sort of getting off the point. This isn't necessarily an orchestration tutorial. Um, it's more a composition tutorial. But what I did was I looked at how John uh, orchestrated and gave the different lines to the different horns and trombone sections and tried to match it up relatively similarly. And one thing I noticed he did was he had his trombones in the end go up and play the the root notes here with the horns down playing the fifth, which I thought was interesting. Traditionally, I would think maybe my horns would play the higher note, the trombones would play the note below, but he really kept the 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 instruments in, in real unity, which was something I thought was interesting. So I tried to play with that. And I went, and this is going to sound the exact same on pianos, but I went and let me mute all of these top lines. I went and just split it out over the course of the different instruments with, again, the blue representing the horns, the green representing the trombones. And you can see that this is what I came up with. You know, I've got trombone four's line here, trombone three's line here. And if you want to do this with a more traditional brass section, and you've just got your four horns, your three trumpets, your two trombones, a bass trombone, and a tuba, you still probably could make something pretty similar if you want to do this across the strings, have them playing in divisi. I, 
a woodwind section. There's numerous, it could be between sections. There's numerous ways to do this. It doesn't necessarily have to be about sticking in one orchestral section. Although for the purpose of building a sort of ominous intro, which has a lot of room to grow, I think it could be something to consider is to maybe just stick with one section of the orchestra, just to throw it out there. But all I did after that was, you know, I said, okay, here's my line. And I went back into my notation software and I just copied it in. And with a little bit of basic orchestral markings using the same dynamics that John did, the same tempos, after I created my composition and went and drew in each line in the brass section, I felt like I had a really good understanding of, okay, these are the techniques that are going on here that I can then carry on over into my compositions. So I'm going to play this section now for you to listen to what I came up with. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you found this interesting and were able to learn something about how pedal notes and pedal tones can be something to play around with in your music. Um, just to give you sort of a basic introduction to what they are and a great place if you're trying to use them in your orchestrations and in your compositions to get started is going to be this intro. It's a really, really common thing that you're going to see in a lot of different film cues and a lot of different compositions um, and how to maybe compose something on top of it. So I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them do down in the comments. That is it for now. I will catch you all next time. Take care.